All right, guys, today we're going to talk about similar polygons. These are going to be polygons with the same shape, but different sizes. So basically, you got two triangles, right? And they have the exact same shape, but maybe one is quite a bit bigger than the other one. So the, the main thing we're going to talk about here is with similar polygons, uh, they're going to have congruent angles, right? So their angles are going to be the same. Uh, the corresponding angles are congruent, like I just said. So they'll have the exact same angles as one another, um, but their sides, their sides aren't going to be the same. And you can see that. This one's sides are so much bigger than this one's. Uh, but they are going to be proportional. Okay? Which means they'll all have the same proportion. So if this one's two times bigger than that side, then the other corresponding side is going to be two times bigger than the other corresponding side. You see, so here down in example one, we're going to use the figures below to answer the questions that follow. So what we have here is triangle ABC is similar to, that's what this tilde means, triangle XYZ. Okay, so then we're going to name the corresponding parts. We know that the corresponding angles are congruent. So angle A is congruent to angle X. That would be its corresponding angle. Okay, I'm just going to stick with the angles, so I'm going to jump to C. Angle B here, the one at the tippy top, is going to be congruent to angle Y, the other one at the tippy top. Okay, and then this last angle, angle C, is going to be congruent to angle Z, right? So notice all the angles are going to be congruent to a corresponding angle. Now, like I said about the sides, the sides are going to be proportional. And that's what this means right here, proportional. Okay, so it's proportional to. So side BC, the one going from the two lines to the, the three line angle, that would be angle, or I mean side YZ over here. Angle BZ is going to be proportional to side YZ. Okay, so side AB, this left side, would be proportional to side XY, its corresponding side. All right, and then CA, CA going from the right to the left here, would be proportional to ZX. Okay, so let's talk a little bit more about what it means uh, to be similar. Again, the quadrilaterals below are similar. Then what must be true? Oh, well let me tell you. The angles, the angles are congruent, see? So angle A is congruent to angle E. I'll just do one more. So we got what, angle B? Well that's got to be congruent to a corresponding angle. And the angle that angle B is congruent to is angle F. You can tell by how it's labeled. I let you guys finish out the other two. Pretty simple. Now, what do we know about the sides? What must be true? Well, let me tell you, right? If I have side AB here, AB, that left side, side AB is going to be proportional to side EF, okay? And we'll do one more. We'll do the type, the tippy top. Yep. AD, side AD is going to be proportional to side EH. Mm -hmm. That's right. And obviously we have the other two corresponding sides. I'm not going to list them all. I think you get it. Next page. So, next we're going to talk about this common ratio. Okay, we're getting into what it means to be proportional. The common ratio um, is going to be the ratio of the lengths of two corresponding sides. So I'll draw you a little picture. Down here at the bottom, we'll say that's a length of three. And then I'll draw a similar triangle, right? Same angle, same shape, but it's just a little bit bigger. We'll call the bottom here six, okay? Then the ratio is going to be of uh, this side to this side is three to six. And there's a couple of ways we could write that. I could write that three to six, 
all right? And when you write a ratio, that's how you read it. This is 3 to 6, all right? Or I can write it kind of like a fraction, 3 to 6, okay? And with our ratios, we always want to reduce if we can. It makes things more simple. It makes things nice. So like here, we could also say this is a 1 to 2 ratio because it reduces to 1 half if I divide each one of these by their common factor of 3. Okay, so let's look at what that looks like with our shapes down here. We're going to use similar figures below to answer the questions that follow. All right, so they give us, they say A, B, C, D is similar to E, F, G, H. Okay, so what's the common ratio of quadrilateral A, B, C, D to quadrilateral E, F, G, H? And I'm going to go in the order of the wording. So it's A, B, C, D to E, F, G, H. So A, B, C, D should be first, E, F, G, H should be second. Well, the ratio, I use the corresponding side. So I'll go back to the tippy top. On quadrilateral A, B, C, D, the tippy top, A, D, is 10. All right, so the ratio of A, D to its corresponding side, which would be EH. EH has a length of 5. The ratio here is going to be 10 to 5. Okay, which if I reduce that by 5, that's a ratio of 2 to 1. Okay, so the common ratio here is, is 2. All right, or 2 to 1. So I could just show you that's the same with every single corresponding side. So like, let's take the bottom here. Down here at the bottom, we got BC is six, and its corresponding side is FG, which is three. All right, and notice that ratio there is gonna be the same. If I reduce this by three, I get two to one. So all these sides, the corresponding sides, have a ratio of two to one. So you'll notice they're all two times bigger in A, B, C, D than they are in E, F, G, H. Okay, and that has to be true for every side. So every side has got to have that ratio of 2 to 1. Which notice I took this right side here is 8, the right side here is 4, it's got the same ratio. They got to all have that same ratio, okay? So let's go look at example 4 here. Determine if the figures are similar. Justify your answer. Oh man, that seems hard. Right? So let's just look at our figures. I got a triangle here, right? Well, if this is 90 degrees and that's 37 degrees, how can I find that angle? Well, I know all the angles got to add up to 180. So let me do 180 minus the 90 minus the 37 to get the side that's missing or the angle. The angle that's missing here, if I calculate that, and you could use your calculator. I'm like a human calculator, so I'm just going to calculate this 53. So this angle down here is 53 degrees. Okay, well, hold up. You asked me to determine if the figures are similar. Well, I know what it means to be similar. That means all the angles are the same, and the sides are proportional. So are all the angles the same? Well, I notice I got a 90 here. I got a 53 here. Well, this is going to be 180. That's got to be a 37. So the angles are congruent. All right, I'm just to find my answer. Well, I don't know if they're similar just because the angles are the same. I got to check the sides. So let's check the sides and let's check those ratios. So on the left here, I got a nine to six ratio, right? On the, the right here, I got an 18 to 12 ratio. And I got to keep going consistent. So I'm going left to right, left to right, left to right. So when I'm on the bitty bottom, it's a three to two. I got to go in that same order, right? Well, are all those ratios equal? Let's reduce. Here I could reduce this by three. That would give me three to two. And if you can't reduce your, your fractions, just plug them in the calculator. Let the calculator do the work, okay? Ask your teacher to show you how to do that. So here, 18 to 12, well, that can reduce by 6. 18 divided by 6 is 3. 12 divided by 6 is 2. 
And then obviously this one doesn't reduce, but notice what I got here. They're all a three to two ratio, right? So the angles are congruent and the sides are proportional. If that's true, then hey, guess what? The triangles are similar. All right, so they are similar. Why? Why? Let's justify. Well, that's why. I got my work, right? The angles are congruent, the sides are proportional. Easy enough. Next sheet. So when you look at this next sheet, just a couple examples. Example five. Use the cinema figures below to answer the questions that follow. I got A, B, C, D is similar to E, F, G, H. So they're telling me they're similar, so I know the angles are the same, and they're all labeled that way, and I know the sides are proportional, right? So let's just finish this statement. Quadrilateral E, F, G, H is similar to quadrilateral A, B, C, D. And be sure to go in the same order. You should be used to that by now. All right. Problem B says, what is the common ratio? So let's look at a side. And let's not choose a side that has a variable, because then we don't know what that length is, right? Let's choose the side where we know both the lengths. So I know here that this is a 2.5 to 10. And notice I went left to right, so i got to be consistent now with the rest of the problem. Left to right, 2.5 to 10. And if you're not good, especially with that decimal, on how to reduce that, and then just plug that bad boy in your calculator, right? And do 2.5 over 10, all right? And even though it gave me the decimal, some of y'all will give you fractions, some will give you decimals. If it gives you decimals, hit menu, go to number, and we're going to tell it, hey, give me that fraction. Approximate that to a fraction. And calculator do that for us because it's nice. And so it tells me, oh, that reduces to 1 to 4. Okay? So this is a 1 to 4 ratio. So I set it up, 2.5 to 10. Reduce if I can. There we go. So now, here's what we always do. We teach you this stuff, then we make you solve. Right? So find the following. They want to know what X is. I don't know why they're always asking me what X is, but I'm going to tell them again. Right? So I look, where's X? All right? And I set up my proportion. So I have X to 12, because I know it's got to be proportional. And they're all going to have the same proportion. Well, that same ratio is 1 to 4, as long as I'm going the same way, left to right, like I did here. Okay? So X over 12 should equal that 1 to 4 ratio. And then I solve this equation. The way I solve it, we're going to cross multiply. So that gives me x times 4, which is 4x, equals 1 times 12 is 12. And then I divide by 4. So there you go. Don't know why you can't figure it out on yourself. You're always asking me, but I'll tell you what. x is 3. Look at that. I rhymed. Now I'm going to do it for y. And again, I may be going fast. Just pause the video. Now. I look, where's Y? Y's right here in the bitty bottom. So I set up my ratio, left to right, 3 to Y has got to be 1 to 4, because that's the common ratio. I cross multiply, 3 times 4 is 12, Y times 1 is Y, well there you go, Y is 12. Y equals 12. And then I'll do Z, okay, so that's the left side, same way, you got to go Left to right, since that's the way I did it before. Z to 5 equals 1 to 4, the common ratio. And then we cross multiply. So Z times 4 is 4Z. 1 times 5 is 5. Divide by 4 on each side. So Z is 5 fourths. All right. Now here's where I recommend... If uh, you feel like you got it, pause the video, try example six, and then come back and check with what I do next, okay? But I am going to go through example six for you. So example six, use the similar figures below to answer the questions that follow. They tell me that this figure is similar to this figure, okay? Find the common ratio of RSTUV to polygon ABCDE. 
So that's this one to this one, left to right. So I look for the side that doesn't have any variables. That's this bitty bottom. And I set it up. It's 18 to 4. Well, what's that reduced to? I can reduce both those by 2, and that would give me a 9 to 2. Okay? So the ratio is 9 to 2. Remember, I can write it like this, or we we'll usually write it like a fraction. 9 to 2. Okay? We'll find the values of x and y. I told you. They're asking me again. Always asking me to find x and y. Okay. Anyways, so I go find x, and I set up my proportion. Right? I go x to 3, and I know that's got to equal the common ratio. That's why I find that first. 9 to 2. I cross multiply. So 2x equals... 27, and then I finish her out by dividing. So x is going to equal, and that doesn't divide evenly, so I'll just leave it as 27 over 2. That's about the ugliest 7 I've ever read. Right there, I see it. Okay, so the next one, I'm going to find y. What's y equal? Well, here's the side with y. We go left to right to its corresponding side, so I got y plus 2 to 5 equals that common ratio of 9 and 2. Okay, I cross multiply here, this one, be careful. I multiply this times 2. I've got to multiply the whole thing, which means i got to put it in parentheses. Okay, so put that bad boy in parentheses, that equals 9 times 5 is 45. And this will just be easier. Go ahead and distribute because you're used to doing that. So you get 2y plus 4 equals 45. And then finish off and subtract your 4. So 2y equals 41. Divide by 2. So y is 41 halves. So now I found x and y. All right. Go back, pause it, watch it again, especially this one. Okay, maybe take it slow. Make sure you got it. Adios. It's been a pleasure, guys.